For decades, astronomers have scanned the skies searching for the unusual, the kind of phenomena that defy our understanding of physics. Most discoveries fit neatly into categories, comets, asteroids, planets, stars. But every so often, something appears that breaks the rules. That is what happened with the third recorded interstellar visitor to our solar system, codenamed 3I slash Atlas. What began as a routine observation quickly became one of the most unsettling discoveries in modern astronomy. Because beyond Mars, in the cold void, the James Webb Space Telescope detected something it should not have seen. Not reflected sunlight. Not the familiar flicker of ice and dust. But light. Artificial light. A glow that carried with it the signature of design rather than chaos. And that raised the oldest and most haunting question humanity has ever asked asked, are we alone? Stay with me until the end of this video, because the revelations about this object will challenge everything we think we know about the universe. Each piece of evidence becomes stranger than the last, and the final conclusion may leave you with chills. Atlas first appeared as a faint, almost forgettable speck on the edge of our solar system. It was moving too quickly, on a trajectory no local object could follow, which confirmed its interstellar origin. Born beyond the gravity of our Sun, it had been flung across the galaxy by some unknown force, now drifting silently into our neighborhood. At first, astronomers treated it like a curiosity, an exotic visitor, much like Oumuamua in 2017 or Borisov in 2019. But something about Atlas was different. Its brightness didn't match its predicted size or composition. It shimmered with an unnatural consistency, as if something within it was glowing steadily rather than reacting to the sun. Unlike natural comets, it didn't flare, sputter, or fade. It just stayed lit, like a beacon cutting through the dark. Telescopes across the globe rushed to confirm the data, but it was Webb, with its unparalleled infrared vision, that uncovered the first hint that we were looking at something impossible. When Webb turned its gaze toward Atlas, expectations were simple. Clarify whether the glow was ice reflecting sunlight or dust sublimating into space. Instead, what it revealed shocked the scientific community. The light wasn't reflected at all, it was emitted. Webb's instruments detected a thermal signature radiating outward from the core of the object. This wasn't scattered sunlight, but something generating heat from within. Even more disturbing, the emission wasn't constant, it pulsed not randomly, but with faint, irregular cycles, patterns, rhythms. Nature rarely produces such signatures without an underlying mechanism. And if it wasn't nature, then what was it? Scientists scrambled for explanations, radioactive decay, internal friction, some exotic isotope we had never seen before. But one by one, these ideas collapsed under the weight of the data. The rhythms, were too deliberate, too precise. It was as if the object itself was alive or powered. As weeks passed, more observatories joined in the hunt. With every observation, the mystery deepened. Atlas didn't move like a rock. Its trajectory wasn't the chaotic tumble of a natural body pulled by gravity. Instead, it drifted with uncanny stability, almost as if it was adjusting itself ever so slightly through gravitational wells. Its rotation was too steady, its surface too reflective. In fact, parts of it were measured to be nearly perfectly reflective, like polished metal. 
that was the tipping point. The whispers began, not in conspiracy forums, but in encrypted emails between respected scientists. This wasn't just an object, it was technology. The possibility that we were watching an alien probe, a craft, or even a beacon was no longer absurd. The evidence was stacking against the comfort of natural explanation. Humanity had to face an uncomfortable reality. What we were looking at might not have been built by earthly hands. If all that wasn't enough, Webb's analysis revealed something even more chilling. The light from Atlas wasn't just emitted, it was focused into narrow bands, specific wavelengths, the kind we associate with deliberate engineering. On Earth, this is what we do with LEDs, lasers, and communication systems. The emission wasn't broad like a star's glow. It was precise, targeted. Even more, the light seemed to respond subtly to solar radiation, adjusting in real time, almost like an onboard system was controlling it. Some scientists argued the patterns resembled binary. Others saw hints of structured sequences buried in the glow. Nothing was conclusive, but one fact was undeniable. This was not a passive object. It was doing something. It was behaving with intent. Astronomers then turned their attention to the signals buried within the object's light. At first, the data seemed random, scattered noise across the spectrum. But deeper analysis revealed something extraordinary. By applying Fourier transforms, scientists at MIT and Harvard uncovered structured, repeating pulses too precise to be natural. These weren't the chaotic emissions of a comet, they were encoded, not in any human-made format, neither binary as we use in computers nor radio modulation like satellites, but still deliberate, still mathematical. It was as if the object was whispering in a language just beyond our comprehension. Some proposed that it was a beacon, an automated broadcast looping endlessly through space. Others suggested telemetry, a constant stream of data reporting back to wherever this thing came from. But the most unsettling possibility was that the message wasn't meant for us at all. It had been transmitting long before we ever noticed. And someone, somewhere, may already have heard it. As scientists tried to decode the hidden language, Atlas made its next move. Without warning, its luminosity surged, a flare so sudden, so violent, the telescopes captured it in real time. Within two minutes, its brightness jumped by nearly 40% and then stabilized at a new, elevated level. This wasn't a natural outburst. There was no solar wind interaction, no fragmentation, no impact event. It was as if a switch had been thrown. Webb recorded the change in thermal signature, and the implications were terrifying. It looked as though something had powered on. Was the object dormant all this time, waiting for the right moment? Was our observation the trigger? If this was activation, then it was no accident. The flare was meant to be seen. As if the flare wasn't enough, orbital calculations soon revealed another anomaly. Atlas was no longer following its original course. Its trajectory had shifted, subtly, but undeniably. Not the result of gravity, not the push of solar radiation, but a controlled maneuver. The object adjusted its inclination toward the plane of Earth's orbit. In other words, it changed lanes. To call it unsettling would be an understatement. Natural objects don't correct their paths. They don't alter course to drift closer to Earth. This wasn't just a rock on a cosmic journey anymore. 
It was a vessel in motion, and its intent could no longer be ignored. Scientists scrambled for natural explanations, desperate to avoid the conclusion staring them in the face. But the evidence was mounting. Atlas was not passing through. It was approaching. When Webb and Hubble turned their spectroscopic instruments on the object, the result struck another blow against the idea of natural origin. The readings revealed highly reflective alloys, rare earth elements, and, most disturbingly, compounds that had never been cataloged on Earth. Materials that existed only in theory, predicted by quantum physics under conditions of immense pressure and magnetic confinement. These weren't substances you'd find in a comet. They were engineered, manufactured, designed for resilience, efficiency, and perhaps longevity across interstellar distances. The message in the materials was louder than any signal. This was not a fragment of rock or ice. This was a construct. Whether ancient relic or recent creation, it bore the unmistakable fingerprints of advanced intelligence. The object itself was a message, one that said plainly, we are not alone. Faced with mounting evidence, the world's space agencies grew silent. Reports were classified, observatories redirected, and data streams encrypted. But the scientists at the SETI Institute refused to sit idle. They took a risk that no one else dared. Using their most powerful radio transmitters, they aimed a focused pulse directly at the coordinates of Atlas. The message was simple but universal. Mathematical constants, the periodic table, and basic visual representations of humanity. A cautious greeting. Then came the wait. Days passed, then a week. Nothing. But just as the experiment was about to be shelved, something happened. A narrowband signal returned, distorted, off frequency, but unmistakably timed to mirror the original transmission. It wasn't an echo. It had been processed, received, acknowledged. The most chilling detail wasn't the content of the reply, but its timing. Exactly 72 hours after the outgoing pulse, down to the second, the object answered. Someone or something had calculated the delay, and it had chosen to respond. What followed the SETI reply was chaos cloaked in silence. Observatories around the world began to experience strange, synchronized glitches. Webb's thermal maps flickered. Hubble's gyroscopes wavered. Ground telescopes froze at the exact moments they tried to focus on Atlas. It was as if the object itself was jamming us, deciding what we could see and what we couldn't. Then came the silence. Agencies stopped releasing updates. Journals retracted their detailed reports. The story that began as a scientific mystery had become something else entirely, a classified asset. But in the fragments of data left behind, one final clue emerged. When plotted against planetary positions, the trajectory of Atlas formed a Fibonacci spiral, an ancient mathematical ratio written into seashells, galaxies, and the very DNA of life. Its flares, its pulses, even its course corrections aligned with prime number sequences. The odds of this occurring naturally? Astronomically low. The only conclusion left was the one no one wanted to face. This wasn't just an interstellar rock. It was a message. A message written not in words, but in behavior. A message designed to be noticed. And now perhaps the message has been delivered. Because Atlas is no longer just an object moving through space. It is a vessel, a probe, maybe a scout. It came, it saw, and it responded. And in that response, 
humanity has been forced to confront a truth it has feared and dreamed of in equal measure. We are not alone, and perhaps we never were. If you've made it this far, you now understand why astronomers around the world are shaken. This is no longer about comets or stars. It's about contact. Not on our terms, but on theirs. If you found this journey through the mystery of Atlas compelling, make sure to subscribe to the channel. There are more stories waiting. Stories that might change how you see the universe and your place in it. Because if this was just the first word of the message, what comes next could change everything.